Let's look at this nice geometry problem. So here's the situation. We've got a right triangle. Let's assume it has sides A, B, and C. So the base has length A, maybe this altitude has length B, and so the hypotenuse is length C. And then what we'll do is inscribe this rhombus inside of the triangle. So let's observe that these two sides over here on the right of the rhombus are coincidental with the hypotenuse and the base of the triangle. And then in this little triangle that's on the top left, we'll inscribe a circle. And our goal is to find the radius of that circle. Okay, so let's get to it. So what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm gonna maybe say that the side length of the rhombus is x. So that means that this length right here is x, but then all of these lengths are also x. So maybe I'll label those. Well, let's label this one as well. Okay, so if those are length x, and then this base is length a, then that means that this bit right here has to be a minus x. Okay, cool. And then while we're at it, let's say that this leftover bit of this upper triangle, so from here to here is length y. But since this entire length is b, that makes this b minus y. Okay, so I think that's probably a good start. And now the first thing that I'll do is I'll calculate the radius of this circle in terms of x and y. That's actually maybe a little bit easier because the notation will be cleaner than if we wait and solve for x and y in terms of a, b, and c. Oh, well, maybe while we're at it, let's notice that since this is length x here, this is gonna be length c minus x. Okay, cool. Okay, so now how can we calculate the radius of that circle in terms of x and y? Well, let's go in here and put a center on the circle. So the center would be about there. And then we're gonna draw three radii. So let's draw a radius that comes down here and intersects this uh, line segment in magenta at a right angle. And then it's gonna go over here and thus it's gonna um, intersect the altitude of the triangle at a right angle, and then maybe it'll go in this direction as well. And so all of those are length r. And now let's see what we can do with these radii in place. Well, I'm going to start by observing that this line segment here is going to break my uh, top of the rhombus into two pieces. So we know the whole side has side length x. This little bit right here is side length r, and then this bit right here is gonna be x minus r. And then we know that this entire thing here is length y, but again, we know this is r, so that makes this y minus r. Okay, so that's cool. And then what we can do is observe that we can build some similar triangles into this situation. And so we can build a similar triangle by connecting this center to this vertex here. So let's do that. But we're not gonna show this super carefully. It's not too hard, but let's observe that creates a similar triangle kind of on the top part and on the bottom part. So since those triangles are similar, that means that this distance from here to here will be X minus R. And then likewise, we can do something really like in parallel over here with these two triangles. So that makes this length right here y minus r for essentially the same reason. But now let's observe that since we know that this is length x and this entire length is c, that makes this length right here c minus x. So let's insert that into the situation. So all of this right here is c minus x. Oh, but check it out. We've got two different ways of calculating this length. One is the sum y minus r plus x minus r and one as c minus x. So let's note that. So we've got c minus x has to be equal to y minus r plus 
x minus r. But what can we get out of that? Well, let's observe that that's going to give us x plus y minus 2r. So that's going to give us 2r equals. So that's going to be x plus y, and then we're going to subtract this over. That's going to give us 2x plus y minus c. And so in other words, we've got our radius is in fact equal to, let's see, it's going to be 1 half times 2x plus y minus c. Okay, great. But of course, that's not the final answer here because our x was this accessory measurement here. Our really only fundamental measurements are the side lengths of the triangle, which were a, b, c in the beginning. So now we've got to determine x and y in terms of a, b, and c. And well, we can do this using similar triangles. So let's observe that I have three similar triangles. And I've got this one in the lower left, this entire triangle, and then this one in the upper left. So let's see how we can use that. So first of all, we know that this distance right here is y, and then this distance right here is x. So that means we know that y over x must be equal to, well, this entire distance, the entire altitude of the whole triangle is b, and then the entire base of the whole triangle is a. So we have y over x equals b over a. But now let's observe that that immediately tells us that bx is equal to a times y. Now, that's of course not enough to finish it off because we could only solve for x in terms of y or y in terms of x, and we need x and y in terms of a and b. So we've still got a little bit of work to do. But we can apply similar triangles again, perhaps one time involving the, perhaps involving the hypotenuse. So let's observe that a minus x over x, so we've got a minus x over x is going to be the same thing as a over c. And that's by the hypotenuse and the base of the lower left triangle and the hypotenuse and the base of the entire triangle. So let's see, what did I say? This was going to be equal to a over c. But let's see, what can we do with that? So that's going to give us a times c minus c times x is equal to a times x. So in other words, it's going to give us a times x plus c times x equals a times c. Or in other words, it's going to give us x equals a times c over a plus c. Okay, that's good. Now we can plug that into this and we've got an equation for y. So let's notice that y is going to be equal to b over a times x, but using this formula over here, that's going to be b times c over a plus c. But now we've got it. We've got a formula for x, and we've got a formula for y that we can put into our ready-made formula for the radius, and then just simplify everything out. So let's see what that's going to give us. So we'll have r is 1 half, and then let's see, we've got 2x. So that's going to be 2 times ac over a plus c, and then plus y. So that's going to be bc over a plus c, and then minus c. So let's see, we've got to give c a common denominator here. So if we give that a common denominator, what will we have? Well, we're going to have a times c plus c squared over a plus c. But that's going to simplify ourselves a little bit. Notice that we can perhaps factor a c out of the whole thing. So factoring a c out of the whole thing will give us c over 2. And then we'll have 2a minus a, so that's a, and then plus b, and then minus c, all over a plus c. And that's the final expression for the radius in terms of the side length of our triangle. And that's a good place to stop.